G'day gang. So, for many of you who've been watching, you would probably know that this is the Hyundai Santa Fe that uh, my buddy owns. And the uh, <laughs> big difference between this and my little Nissan is that this has had just about everything changed on it. Um, with the saga of the Santa Fe, I think there's a few a few videos up there of the saga of the Santa Fe. It's had a DPF, it's had an intercooler, it's had a turbocharger, it has had a new EGR, did I say turbo? Yes, turbocharger, new EGR. This is the this is the atmospheric, um, oh sorry, am yeah, atmospheric um, uh, pressure switch, I think it's called, or something like that, for the DPF that, that tells the um, difference in the in the pressures between the front and the back of the DPF. Um, all these codes had been coming up for this thing, but it was the DPF was absolutely chockers blocked. Um, it split the intercooler open because the turbo wouldn't it had nowhere for else for the for for things to go and it split the turbo open and then the turbo wheel actually I think it, I can't remember if it broke off or it's just it just destroyed the the turbo then it kept coming up with EGR code so we knew the EGR had been filthy and it was cleaned up and so but we replaced that uh, EGR quite a bit ago and now it comes it's coming up with an EGR temperature issue um, I put a radiator in it a few weeks ago because it was leaking um, and we thought maybe that might have been the issue but it's not now we have noticed or I did notice that it, that it was leaking some something down the back of the engine there and the EGR cooler is just in in the back here so um, I'm going to change that cooler out. I'll start by pulling all the top of the gear off here and things that are in the way. These little plasticky bits. The intercooler will come off in one big chunk. Um, pull its turtle shell off. We'll get a better look at where the EGR cooler is. You know how much I love diesels? <laughs> if you know me well. You'd say you hate them, Zig, and you'd be 100% correct. Down in there, that silvery jigger, right there. EGR cooler hoses that go um, into the heater, into the engine. Just move some more stuff out of the way. Just shows I should maybe work off memory. Um, support there. Two bolts on that end, and three on this end. Yep. It's just a big hood exchanger, essentially, is all it is. Big hood exchanger. So, cool bananas. I've got the right bit. Uh, the memories come flooding back now. <laughs> yeah, remove that from here. Gives you a little bit more swing room. You'll undo your, your two bolts there. Now I'm going to go down I'm going to undo the EGR itself. We're going to take this whole cooler and EGR out as a unit. So when you've got it all undone, being cautious not to lose the gaskets, okay? You can just now pick this whole thing up like that and pull it out. Brand new EGR that we put in not so long ago, and that's the cooler right there. I'm going to reuse the gaskets. I'm going to reuse the gaskets. Uh, now we'll undo this fella and uh, swap him over. Nice. We'll fit him back on now. now this one down in here is a bit of a, a bit of a trick. Here's, here's a little one that'll get you out of trouble if you put your nut on your screwdriver and you put your screwdriver on your stud 
and you drop it on down. Oh, that's the end of that. We'll try that again. So after retrieving the nut, <laughs> we have a look down there. You can see it is placed on top. And uh, now we'll just put the socket on there. We'll just give it a couple of threads before we put the other end bolts in and the gasket in there. And if all has gone to plan, you'll have all your bolts in there. Should be secured, don't forget that little one that's underneath there. And now it's time to start putting them all back together. Uh, one bit at a time. Don't forget to plug everything back in. And uh, we'll see the, we'll see how she, uh, see if it makes a difference once we get this all back together again. And of course assembly. It's just reversal of disassembly. Probably a good idea to work some worm, worm clamps on those hoses there. That's just the vacuum, that's no big. But, um, yep. The new fella's in there. We'll be uh, ready to start it up in about mm, 15 minutes. We'll put the rest of the top on. That's the only tools I've used too, by the way. Look. Nothing special. Nothing special. Anyway, let's so go. It's all going right. It's going to look just like it did before you started. We'll uh, fire this up and warm her up now. to just uh, sort out the problem until it goes for a good drive. It usually takes, well shit it can go for a couple of weeks before it, before it takes a dump, but we'll see what goes on. Anyways, that's the process. Check you later. Have yourself a good one. So you would probably have had a, a check light up here on. If you don't have a scanner you can quite easily disconnect the battery, turn on the, the ignition, Put the headlights on, leave it for a minute or two, turn it all off again, whack the battery back on, and your light will go away. It'll stay in your history codes, so you really need to have a scanner put on and uh, clear the codes away. But uh, yeah, we should be sweet as now.